Sometimes it is necessary to destroy not only orcs that stand in their way, but also ordinary people. Because every fighter must work undercover, and no person has the right to know who he really is. In order to maintain mystery, you need to clear the battlefield of any witnesses. There are only five people left whom they must find and destroy. The battle with orcs can be made much brighter and more exciting only by killing some player during the fight. The man found himself on a tree and told the newcomer that half of the items of the murdered boy belonged to the guild. Therefore, they must be shared. The novice assured him that he could not worry about it. He would do everything at the highest level and return the stolen property to the owner. The newbie asked if the teacher was going to kill that boy. He replied that he didn't have it on the list, but that he was going to destroy it and collect the award if he had the chance. It would be very foolish not to use it. But he was a monster going against an orc champion alone. Isn't that dangerous? But he will be tired enough after the battle, so eliminating him will be as easy as taking candy from a child. He will create absolutely no resistance. You just need to choose the right moment and attack. He leaves the rest to the novice. The teacher jumped from the tree and asked to follow him. The novice asked if they had not completed all the work yet. He grabbed the dead body by the collar and pulled the body. The orcs will do their job well if he throws them a body to raise their tone and spirit. The guy stopped. He looked away and thought. He saw a clearing. There the knights destroyed the orcs. The master said they were doing much faster than he expected. His fighters said they could clear this dungeon very quickly if they moved at the same pace. They manage everything very easily, and the orcs were not as strong as they expected. You just need to find an approach, and it will be very easy to destroy the orc. The master said that although things are going very well, they need not to neglect the safety rules, and they will not wriggle out of the heroes. They should turn back at the first opportunity. The knights did not understand what he meant. The infantry is almost done hunting. By tomorrow, everyone will be preparing to attack the orc champion. It's better for them to prepare for the main event and not waste too much energy here on the battlefield with ordinary, ordinary, ordinary orcs. At the same time, a notification came to all his soldiers. The master looked at the screen in detail. These notifications made everyone very upset. It said that someone had already defeated the orc champion whom they were so eager to kill and enjoy such a magnificent trophy. They began to discuss this situation among themselves, and no one understood how this could happen or who had the power to kill an orc champion. How could this happen? The main groups of each guild should be busy fighting the orcs. Something is not clear here. You need to find out more information. The master was asked what was going on. Perhaps this meant that the missing people from the Lion Guild were still alive. He replied that he was not sure about that. He thought the people from the Lion Guild were bluffing. Something strange began to appear from the ground. It was a giant skeleton. The guy leveled up and got the Champion Orc Hunter achievement. He was also given a catalog as an additional reward. It would be nice if this catalog gave him a useful skill. He opened his eyes wide but he saw the book of the gloomy priest in front of him. It had the power of a shrew and could keep five living dead in it. Effects, the weakened spirits packed in the book of a grim priest will help you get the power of a shrew, which increases all abilities by 5%. It was an inventory in which you can store the living dead. In addition, the abilities increase if you place them there. He decided to try and a huge skeleton appeared in front of him. It was the living dead. He activated this skill to check and understand how it works. The earth began to split. What was happening was really unexpected for the boy. The need to use his hands to deliver the final blow will disappear. Instead, he will simply summon skeleton soldiers as soon as he enters the dungeon. With this book, the main drawback of the skill of summoning skeleton soldiers will disappear forever. Meanwhile, in the forest, the master ran forward. 
But his assistants did not understand where he was running, because the orc champion had already been destroyed. He was angry at them for thinking he was stupid. He knew perfectly well that the orc champion no longer had. But why was he running somewhere then? He needed to at least see with his own eyes what had happened to come up with an explanation. He needed to say something to the park van master when they got out of here. He had expected a worthy trophy from them, in the form of an orc champion. And now that it was destroyed, they had nothing to compensate for it. All fighters began to think, and now everything became clear. They all ran to each other after their master. The orc champion was defeated much faster than they expected. They have to change their plans. They need to leave the guy who killed the orc champion alone and deal with the other targets in the meantime. But everyone was wondering what happened to the newcomer who stayed to clear the territory. The teacher told him to follow him as soon as he finished. He would give him another lesson after this was all over. If their identities are revealed here, their superiors will be very worried. They must not allow this at any cost. In the event of a worst-case scenario, they must be ready to say goodbye to their lives. They no longer had time for idle talk. They all had to move as stealthily as possible. One of the fighters saw that someone was approaching them. It was a rookie running and doing it very loudly. Yes, it was really loud, but because he was not running alone, but with skeleton warriors. The teacher was shocked. Did he go and provoke this boy? The newcomer ran up to the rest with the skeletons. The teacher started shouting at him and asked why he brought them here. It was unclear what to do with them next. They immediately asked the master what they should do now, because this novice made it very easy to find their location. The fact that this guy was attacking them, surely he knew something and was hiding it. If the battle continued, it would attract the attention of the rest of the guilds. If it really happens, it will be over for them. Even if he had to leave the mission unfinished, he had to kill this guy and remove all traces. The master asked if everyone was ready. The rookie scattered all the fighters with one blow. They fell to the ground. None survived. Only the master, the novice, and his skeletons remained in this area. The master did not understand what had happened. Did the newcomer betray them? He approached the master. And when he got closer, the master realized that this was no ordinary novice boy. His eyes emitted some kind of black smoke. He understood whose fault only half of the people survived in the past. But in this novice's memories, he could not find any information related to the Messiah Guild. The newcomer glanced at the murdered man. Even in the past, this boy was counted among the missing persons. He took a mask for himself and said that it was time to visit the head of the Skull Guild. He was lucky enough to find a connection with the Skull Guild and the Messiah Guild. But first, he had to finish off the Orc Champion. The Master did not understand who this scum was and where he came from. The skeletons did not allow any movement. The fighters asked them to leave and not touch them. Luck was on the side of the newcomer, because all the boys from his memories have gathered here in one place. The guy looked at everyone. The skeletons kept everything under control, and no one could laugh at them. The master asked not to kill him. But he killed everyone without any hesitation. Therefore, we can conclude that he definitely killed before. He approached the master, but he told him that he would definitely not learn any information from him. It made no sense for him to tell anything if he was going to kill him anyway. But there was a question of how he would kill him fast or slow. Even if he manages to get out of here alive, he will only become an obstacle for the leader. There was only one way out. Spill blood. He decided his own fate. He stepped over himself and committed a completely stupid act. But perhaps, on the contrary, he should be grateful to him. Because in this way, he proved that he had important information. These great changes that have opened up to the world will enable Japan to move forward. They will work with Lee Jun of the Messiah Guild to lay the foundation and then spread their influence. Song Chong was sent to Korea to become one of the members of the Skull Guild.
and dedicate himself to serving his home country. If they can take over the dungeons and items in Japan, including everything that appears in Korea, they will be able to recreate a more powerful empire than now. It will be called the Yamato State. The man wanted to introduce Song Chong to mentors who would help him along the way. Representatives of Japan's elite. Song was shocked that these people would be his mentors. It was a great honor to meet them. He couldn't even think that he would be able to meet a master archer and a master swordsman. There is one guy you need to get rid of when the dungeon opens. Korea Dungeon Broker. Su Wang was a nice guy, but judging by everything going on, he got in the way of their Japan brokers. They must destroy him no matter what. There was also a talented broker in Korea. What was his name? The novice hoped that the reason would be something else. But it seems that it was vanity. It disgusted him. Even in the worst times, they trusted each other and fought side by side. Master Archer and Master Swordsman. Before his return, he conquered a lot of dungeons with them. They always went ahead to save the world. And he wanted to be like them. They were not only his teachers, but also his moral support. They were very valuable comrades to whom he was about to entrust his life. Even in the toughest battles. But that's what he thought before. And in fact, they are no different from Lee Jun. This time, he can't let them carry out what they have planned. They said that the next target is C. Jane. It was a dungeon broker. He must have been very talented if he is on their blacklist. The fact that he is not in the memories means that the assassination was a success. If the people from Yamato take his place, Lee Jun will benefit from it. As long as he is blacklisted, attempts to kill Si Chan will continue. They will find him anywhere. Maybe he can find a way to weaken their group? The guy also needs a broker who can find dungeons for him. That's why everything is going very badly. He finished his work, so he had to prepare to enter the dungeon. Sombe was asked if it was always so quiet at the gate. There is no chance that monsters will come out of the gate, so there should be silence. As soon as they clear the dungeon, chaos will begin here. Therefore, he suggested that his partner rest for now. As soon as they clear the dungeon, everyone will interview the players. But Sanbei said it was for a different reason. Because players would be fighting each other for items. The man was surprised by such information. Apart from the Messiah Guild, everyone will try to get at least one additional item. But in any case, nothing has started yet. It was necessary to sleep because they won't be able to do it in the near future. The man saw something nearby and pointed with his finger. Sombe was very angry with his partner because he was bothering him with questions and kept him awake. But he wanted to say that the gate from the dungeon had appeared. His face was pale and petrified. A player left the portal. The dungeon was cleared and the wounded had to be taken care of. Other players will now start coming out of the gate. You need to carry the stretchers faster. It seems that the situation is worse than before. The news reported that 31 people were killed. The members of the Skull Guild were all killed, and no one came back. Fights begin between Guild members. The man crumpled the newspaper. He didn't understand why they couldn't find whoever killed the Orc champion. How can he believe the words in the newspaper? One of the soldiers said that he is very sorry that this happened. In the future, he will do everything possible to prevent this from happening. But he didn't understand how they were going to compensate him for his lost strength and resources, as well as the disappointment he now feels. This is not a charity business where he can give endless chances to ants like them. He demanded that they return five times more than he spent in a week. It would be better if they did it while he was giving them a chance. They were at a loss as to how to bring them five times more loot. The man asked his secretary if the boy was being treated and in which hospital. She replied that he was injured in the dungeon. He was upset because there were no useful guys left. How could you get a tram in a single-story dungeon? But he told the secretary that he was not injured by a monster. Then it meant that he was attacked by members of another guild. He asked if she was sure about that. 
The girl replied that, over time, the truth can be hidden. But she thought it would be wise to hear the story directly from the boy. He agreed and ordered to go to the hospital. He most likely would not start talking to other people. The secretary took care of that. There were a lot of people in the hospital. Because many guests came to Kim Jin to find out the truth and hear the story from him. The last man came out and asked to contact the guild as soon as he remembered something. But he understood that the boy did not remember anything. The man needed at least some information to report to the management. The elevator was going down. If everything was supposed to happen like this, then why did the Park Van faction ask to include Kin Jin in the team? The man turned his attention to an employee of another guild as he exited the elevator. Judging by the expression on his face, Kim Jin is trying to keep his mouth shut and not tell anything to extra people. Or maybe he is completely silent about everything that happened there and wants to make it his secret. The boy looked at the door. The man said that they had not seen each other for a long time and asked how he was feeling. He was connected to a drip. The guy had a lot of information on the Skull Guild, but it makes him suspicious. He saw them attack the Orc Champion. But the fact that they were destroyed means that the valuables were stolen by another group. But he remembered very well that he had destroyed them one by one. The last thing he saw was them using the Hunter Silent skill. The man knew about the skill of stealth. It allowed whoever used it to hide completely. Now it was clear that the target of those guys was the Orc Champion and the other players. If the boy had not been helped by the ability of infected blood, then he would not have survived and died on the spot. If the person who attacked him had not been affected by the blood that he shed, then perhaps he would already be dead. That's because he's lucky. If all the guys from the Skull Guild were destroyed, then no one else knew about what was happening there. And he was the only witness. It was true but he thought it would be better for him to be careful for a while. In any case, the Phoenix Guild managed to get something. The president got angry every time just thinking about it. He already lost a lot because of the guys from the skull. He can't just leave it like that. He needs to dig up more information about the Skull Guild to reduce his losses. What Kim Jin told him turned out to be much more useful than he expected. The president asked what the boy wanted. He pretended to be modest, but the man asked him to behave normally and answer the questions. He may have been spying on the players from their deal, but he came to the man from the start because he had a purpose. Kim said he needs to find one person. The president asked who the person was. The guy said he was a well-known broker, Si Chang. He is a professional in his business, but he can't find him because his connections are limited. The president was surprised that Kim knew this broker, but he remembered the request and told Kim to pick up the phone when he gets a call from an unknown number. He was a very high-minded person who chose his own clients, but he was really a professional in his field. Also, the man decided to repeat just in case that the information he told should be kept secret. Everything that happened must be hidden. If rumors start to spread, then this situation will become dangerous for Kim. The boy replied that he understood this, so he would remain silent no matter who visited him and asked. The president and his secretary left. Everything went according to plan, even though he didn't trust Kim completely. Park Van knows nothing about the connection between the Messiah Guild and the Skull Guild. As soon as he starts forcing Lee Jun's information on them, the Master Swordsman and Master Archer will turn their attention to Park Van. Who doesn't know that Kim inflicted these injuries on himself will have to suffer a little. And while Lee Jun and Park Van will compete in who is more nervous, he will be able to focus on improving his strength. Despite the fact that the Skull Guild is large enough, they did not have sponsors. That can only mean one thing. They carry out monetary transactions by selling items abroad. Black markets outside of Korea need to be explored. Then he can meet with the merchants who do business with these guys. He felt that all these merchants were the same. Kim was released from the hospital and should have been contacted a long time ago. Just at that moment, he got a call. 
He said he heard something and offered to make a deal. He needed more dungeons. But the deal can only happen when he sees Kim's skills. He said he will send the details later. And dropped the phone. So it was true that he chooses clients. Even despite the fact that it is one story. He used dungeons as a test. It will be very useful if you can make a deal with him. Meanwhile in the city. The man said that he received a call from another applicant for the title of buyer. He got his contact from Park Van. But very little time has passed since the last case. If it's someone trying to get close and kill him again. But he didn't care. They could have a whole truckload of guys like that and they'd still be powerless. But the partner didn't like the fact that he was working for Park Van. But if he really worked for Park Van, he would have contacted him directly. In any case, he is useless unless he passes the test. Even if he tries to kill Hayun Nam, it will take a long time for him to acquire the necessary skills. But if he is very capable, one day they will be able to live in the dungeon and finish this game. They need guys like this. But the assistant didn't understand why Hyun Nam was saying that. If he needed guys like that, he was right in front of him. But Hyun said he still has a tough road ahead of him. Because he couldn't even clear the dungeon by himself. In any case, he sent him to the Kobold dungeon. He offered to see what would happen there. Does he really have abilities that will interest Hyun, or is he just another weakling? But it was a very powerful dungeon. Hyun didn't force him to do anything, so he can surrender if he wants to. And if he succeeds, it will be a good indicator of quality and strength. The aide believed that Hyun did not think about business in such cases. But he recalled that he has a very fast metabolism, so he already wanted to eat a lot. Because he recently ordered a ton of food and ate it all himself. The car drove up to a large crater. Kim came out of it. He was surprised that he was sent to the Cobalt Dungeon. Did they do it not to make money? It seems that the test will be difficult. For an ordinary player, it will not be easy to pass this dungeon. But this applied only to those who did not know how to overcome Cobalts. It was located near the Songpo Dungeon. The secretary took care of him and reported everything to the president. She asked if she should start the timer right now. Hyun was surprised that Kim was already there. What a hasty guy, thought Han, but the secretary said he didn't bring anything special with him. Hyun couldn't tell if it was stupidity or confidence. This guy was abnormal, but they can only guess. Maybe he didn't prepare anything because he was very self-confident. But if this confidence is not bluffing, considering the fact that they still do not fully understand the situation that has developed, the Messiah does not represent a big problem. You shouldn't have said that and you should calm down. Kim Hun was talking to the assistant. He told him how difficult it is to guess what will happen in the dungeon after you get there. Because of the large number of decisive factors, it was a pity that the boys returned empty-handed. But it was good that the damage was not too great. The assistant replied that five of his students had died. How can he even talk about small damage? The president did not try. Lee Jun probably knows about them as well, and about their connection with the Skull Guild. Isn't that why he offered the job related to the A-level dungeon to them in the first place? He said the wrong thing. Of course they agreed that no one could know about the things that could happen in the dungeon. But the man asked if Kim Hun was trying to say that his people were destroyed there, along with the orcs. The president understood that such questions cannot be ignored, but he also did not know what to answer. He fell to his knees and began apologizing. He should have thought twice before saying such things. If they gave him some time, he would investigate again. But that was no longer necessary because they started their own investigation. He asked not to worry so much and to have some drink to relax. The president was in a stupor. Regardless of what was happening now, they still remained allies of the Messiah. He just wanted the president to understand how much they were humiliated. The vessel was already full, but the man continued to pour the drink. 
If there are any unresolved issues between comrades, a glass of good alcohol will always help. It always helps to close all questions, if they are really friends. The president said that all his words absolutely accurately describe the current situation. The door closed. The president underestimated the master archer and the master swordsman. It was necessary to come up with another plan right now. The masters went outside and began to talk about the losses on their side. One of them was talking on the phone. They got into the car and understood that everything was happening as they expected. The guys from the list of killers were not related to it in any way. So someone with bad skills did it. Only Felix's guild remained. This was their last goal. If it's not them, then someone from the list of victims of the mines hid their forces on purpose. Probably, it could have been done by another faction that they didn't know anything about yet. Not far from the Cobalt Dungeon, the two boys on the roof were talking to each other. One said if the player came in today, then they can rest, but the other replied that he went there completely alone. In any case, they have never seen adequate players. This guy is going to die soon, so the gate will most likely be activated again, now at any time. The gate opened before them. This happened when the dungeon was cleared. They were looking through binoculars. This was not the kind of dungeon that could be cleared even by a whole team. They have to find the guy who did it. He calmly got into the car and drove away. They made a big mistake by not being able to catch him. When they told Hyun about it, he was very angry because they received a salary and could not perform their duties well. Everyone likes to receive money, but no one wants to work. He scolded them so loudly that the secretary covered her ears. She called the boss. He responded aggressively. The girl said that they did not pay them for their work because he said that they were from his hometown and they came to help uselessly. Instead of payment, he promised them that they would drink together in some bar. It was bad because he planned to quit drinking from today. If it was Kim Lee, he had nothing to worry about. She needed to go. He would contact the boss soon if he planned to work together. The secretary was cold-blooded enough. But if you think about it, it was around the time he met her. An assistant came to the boss with a bunch of groceries. He asked if the secretary was okay because he offered her a snack. But she just ignored him and moved on. Hyun told him not to touch her. Maybe she has plans for today. Kim Jin single-handedly cleared the Cobalt Dungeon in less than half a day. He completely lived up to his expectations. Hyun saw how much his assistant bought at the 24-hour store and started yelling at him. He made him go back and return everything to the store. Kim was driving on the highway, but he was thinking about further plans. How should he act better? When he came to perform the task, there was a portable walkie-talkie on the car. He took it in his hands and began to examine it. And now, when he was already on his way after completing the task, the boy expected that he would be contacted to conclude a deal. Along with the walkie-talkie, there was a note indicating the company's hours of operation. Hun came to the master, but he could not meet him in such a state. He wanted to ask Chai Hu to help him, but at that moment, his phone rang. He picked up the phone and asked what happened. There was new information about the Skull Guild and he was forced to turn around and go there. Park Van wanted to deal with the new problem quietly as usual. He did not want to explain why. His mercenary asked if he had spoken to the person he was supposed to protect. Park said he hadn't yet, but he would after they finished talking. Then he promised to explain the situation to his subordinates in the same way. In any case, the main thing is not to let him die and help him get out. He will do the rest himself. He was standing on the balcony when his mercenary was leaving. It seems that Park Van is up to something. It was interesting how well he knows the Skull Guild. A man approached the boy from behind and said that he was also curious to know. Park Van may have been an influential person, but it was futile to think that he knew about the Skull Guild. Covering himself with his business, he said that he wanted to know more about the Skull Guild. 
He also said something else strange. He was meeting him. It was very difficult for him to share information about the Skull Guild even with Park Van. He was more cautious than usual. But he also wanted to tell him a secret about the Skull Guild boys who died in the dungeon. President Hun couldn't believe what he said. If those words were true, he wouldn't be able to figure it out on his own. He would have problems if he told the master. Hun asked the man who he was talking to. It was Sean. He often collaborates with him. He is a mercenary who does not belong to any guild and will do whatever is asked of him as long as he is paid money. The president thanked the Messiah Guild for its support and information. But in any case, he was still in debt to the Messiah. Hun thought about it. He approached Sean and asked for a few minutes to talk. He recognized this man from the Messiah Guild. He didn't know what Park Van told him, but he had another suggestion. Something related to cooperation with the Messiah Guild. The mercenary asked to speak in simpler words to understand the situation. He was telling him about a business that could bring him a good income. It seems that making a deal with him will take longer than Hun expected. Park Van was parked at the intersection on the car. His secretary managed to seize the public dungeon, as he requested. But it seemed to her that, in such situations, he uses other methods. This could only complicate the situation if they intervened directly. The Skull Guild must spring into action if he has caused so much noise. Now the locations and supporting actors have been chosen. He decided to set the stage for the main character. He called Kim Jin. Hun sat in a cafe and thought about his plan. He wanted to know what Park Van invented. If he asked five men to protect this person, he must have been an important guy. His name is Kim Jin. This name was on the list of participants for this dungeon. But it can't be that he went alone to the entire veteran guild. It was a very obvious bait, and he didn't know if he should talk about it or not. Kim was contacted by radio the next day and told that he completed the task much faster than expected. He was asked why he hid his skills. Kim showed his skills only because he was asked to. Hyun said that the boy wanted to buy dungeons from him. So he put a list of the dungeons he managed to secure in the 19C branch at Elson Station. He could look through it and contact him if he liked something. But he said he had to do his business now. He said he would call him in a few days. Hyun said he would wait. The assistant asked Hyun if he really planned to make a deal with him. He just had a strange feeling inside that he was very dangerous. But Hyun said that his feelings were always wrong. And in general, being a broker is a very risky profession. Kim came to Park Van and said that his idea was risky enough and he wouldn't really want to be the bait. He didn't know what rumors were going around about what they were talking about. It was only a matter of time before they reached the Skull Guild. But he would lose the meaning of life if he just sat and did nothing. He specially hired several experienced guys for him. He offered to trust him and enter the dungeon with them. But his life was at stake. He was not sure that this was the only right way out. Park Van was unfortunate because he was the debtor of these guys and he was the kind of person who can't stand when he owes someone money. Kim agreed, but asked for a significant increase in his salary, because he risked his life. And his life is definitely worth more than what he is being paid now. Each of them rejoiced because they ate the bait. Kim's plan also worked very well. Park agreed to raise his payment. The secretary gave Kim some papers and said that the boss has prepared something for him. If he becomes stronger, his rating will also increase. Everything happens proportionally. Park handed him a skill page. Before going back in time, Park Van met with the Yamato faction. It all ended with the fact that he followed the path of betrayal. But Kim could not have thought that he would receive a skill as a gift. It turned out to be much more useful than he thought. The guild moved through the dungeon. One of the fighters said that with such a rating, Everything will end with the fact that he will only pay off the Borgums until his death. The master told him to shut up and move on. Park and Hun abandoned them to their own devices. It was not fair at all, 
because no one would ever allow themselves to treat their warriors who earn money for them like this. It wasn't even their fault. They didn't understand how much longer they had to stay in this dungeon. He was offered to kill more monsters if he had time to whine. One of the monsters was following them. The meeting took place under the Metro Bridge. The mercenary called Park Van and said that the preparations were complete. He hung up. The mercenary asked that all they had to do was hand Kim Jin over to them. But it seemed to him that they pay very little. Given that they are losing an important client, they should pay much more. The mercenaries made significant concessions. If it was money, then Hun could always give more after the task was done. Also, he could find them another client if they wanted it. Instead, he wanted to make a deal with the Messiah. If they could arrange that, they didn't need any extra payment. But he could not do this because this request was of a personal nature, which was in no way related to the guild. Hun left. The mercenaries hit a gold mine. When it's all over, they'll be rich. They didn't think there was someone like him in the guild's mission. But they are all human, not like Lee Jun. It didn't matter to them. The main thing is to use this opportunity and enjoy life after receiving the money. The dungeon was cleared. Everyone from the Skull Guild survived. But what happened to the members of the Phoenix Guild? Are they all dead? They were all professionals from the Park Van faction. The man asked the soldiers to wait and asked if they knew what happened to their members. He asked this in order to tell their families. One of the characters said he tore them apart beyond recognition, and they got into the car and drove off. But the master asked them to be careful not to make a fuss. Makamuto called the management and said that they had completed their task and were ready for a new one. He had found a target. Someone was going to enter the dungeon as soon as the day was over. They had to leave right now. Otherwise, they would just miss this opportunity and then they would have to answer to the master and find justification for their actions. They agreed to talk when they got there. Meanwhile, at Park Van's office, he stood by the window and thought that there was a good opportunity while he was using the Skull Guild. It is a foreign faction in Korea. He always knew that working only in Korea was a waste of time for him. Even if everything goes wrong and Kim dies, at least he will have information about the Skull Guild. Now that time is almost here. Kim approached the mercenaries. He looked at them with not very happy eyes. They called him to them. They met and introduced themselves to each other. The mercenary was going to do everything he could to clear the dungeon. Another group was supposed to come, but they were a little late. A white car drove up. The mercenary said it was them. It was a group of healthy men. Kim looked at them. Then he asked where their toilet was. But most likely the mercenary did not want to let him go and said that he was just about to go there and promised to show him. And here they are in the toilet. The mercenary was waiting for the boy under the toilet. But their conversation was not long because they needed to enter the gate. The rest didn't know they were on the same side, so they shouldn't be seen together inside the dungeon. But then Kim had to move on his own. The mercenary asked not to worry, because they would always be there, and someone would always look after him. Most likely there will be an ambush on the second level. If they start killing each other from the beginning, it will be very difficult to clear the dungeon. He didn't need to worry at all, because they were professionals in their field. He just needed to trust and enter the dungeon with them. Then he decided to do as they said. The mercenary asked him to go in first because it would be very strange if they went in together. And the boy left. The mercenary hoped that it would be easier than he expected. The entrance is closed. Meanwhile, fighters Park and Hun continued to be in the portal. The first level seems to be more related to research. The clearing conditions were not very difficult, so they need to split up and move one at a time. As for the boy, since he came alone, they will give him a partner who will keep him company. Chin Yu Kei said he would go with this guy. They didn't have much time now, so they needed to kill the goblin quickly and head to level two. They parted ways. The mercenary looked at the boy. Kim looked back at him. 
He did not look away. The real fight will be on level two. One of the soldiers asked why they are not going after Kim now. Because if they kill him, they will not be able to complete the task and, accordingly, will not receive their money. The guys they hired will move with him. It will be more problematic if things don't go very well. And Kim Jin will be able to escape. But he should not distrust their skills. The boy asked not to resent him for this. He came here to get rid of Sean Hun and his boys as soon as it was all over. The mercenary asked what Kim was doing right now. He was told that he was hunting orcs. He was experienced enough to use the poisoned blood skill to catch them. He asked what else Kim was using. But the boys assured the mercenary that they would be able to keep him without any problems. But he was interested in how easily everything was progressing. Is everything going according to plan? Park Van and Hun are not the kind of people who will spend large sums of money just like that. He asked if Chinook still misses him. But he decided to join him because it would give them more confidence. And the moment he loses his vigilance, they'll grab him. They approached the area where he was supposed to be, but no one was there. If he even went somewhere, they would be able to track him down. Judging by the smell of blood, it was the right place. But why is Chin UK not visible? He was interested in what happened here. Something was obviously wrong here. One of the boys said that something was happening ahead. Chin UK lay dead there, and Kim Jin is dead nearby. The leader ordered to inspect Chin UK first, and then check all the surrounding areas. They split up. The guy approached Chin UK. Everything was very bad there. His neck was injured. He asked him not to move because he would not be able to stop the bleeding if he tried to speak or move in this state. He tried to cover the wound to stop the bleeding. Then he looked at Kim. They should hand him over to the Hun anyway. But he wasn't thinking about the client. He just wanted to save his comrade's life. The manager asked how Chin Uk was doing. He was in a serious condition, and if things move at this pace, he may die. But what happened here was unknown. It cannot be that they fought with each other, because they both knew that they were on the same side. It was about the Messiah, so you have to be careful. It was necessary to make sure that no one would find out about it. Was he planning to kill them too? The guy then tried to heal Chin UK because he was bleeding. His magic did not help to heal him. And then a skeleton of warriors appeared behind him. He turned his head back and the skeleton struck him. Blood appeared on his body and it became more and more. They started shouting. They injured Chin UK because they wanted to get to their doctor. They specifically killed their doctor Someone who was used to killing did it. They thought the Hun had tricked them. They had to guess because the request was strange. They were surrounded by skeletons. They tried to conserve their energy. These monsters knew exactly who they needed to kill. And they were moving towards one of the fighters. But most likely they were attacking him because he smelled so bad. Next time he needs to use less perfume when entering dungeons. They started fighting because this perfume was very expensive. There are many monsters with a very good sense of smell. Now he had to deal with them. Everything was normal as long as he performed high quality fan service. The monsters were heading towards him. He grabbed one, raised above his head, and looked him straight in the eyes. After that, he tore it into two parts. The next monster pounced on him. I wanted to grab it but the fighter destroyed him with a U-turn. The remains of the monster fell to the ground. His face was covered in blood. One more monster left. The sun was barely visible through the trees. The mercenary didn't understand how Kim could betray them, but he was dishonest even when he was one step away from death. Kim is no longer surprised to see players using their power only for their own gain but his greed has crossed all boundaries. Earlier, he said that the value of each person is measured differently. There was something special about this guy, considering how interested Park Van and Hun were in him. He said to save Kim's life, 
most likely to ask something. If they can't kill him, then Hum won't be able to enjoy his hobby. If he is about it, then he can fill it next time. There are many people to hunt. The boy looked with fear at each scar in honor of the slain opponents. It would be nice if they get more tasks like this. If they earn more when they kill three players than when they clear dungeons. Every person's life is different. Everything has its own value. They must kill with a method comparable to the cost. Kim became curious. How much is the life of a mercenary worth? And cut off his head. After that, he turned around and left. The night was dark. He was hiding in the same place as before when he conquered his dungeon in his past life. Now he needs to move to the next level. If the Skull Guys are waiting for him. He cleared the first level of the dungeon. The first level was cleared, and the Skull Guild did not understand how it happened or who did it. Chong was to wait and send a signal in case he found the goblin. Judging by the reaction, everything did not go according to plan. The first level was cleared very unexpectedly. Probably they are going to go to level 2 and wait for them to appear to kill. It was very obvious. They understood the real plan. No one could have thought that he would be the first to receive a blow in the back from them. Kim finished cleaning. He put his hand to the gate. They opened up to him. He looked inside and moved to the second level. Meanwhile, in Park Van's office, he didn't understand what he needed the items for, because most people buy them before they enter the dungeon. The secretary said that he had purchased a flask for the liquid, and that seemed strange to her. He knew that blood, body fluids, monster skins, and many other things sold at high prices. But there would be no valuable items in the dungeon that he could sell. So she reported this information to the president. Why did he buy the bulb if his life was in danger? What is he thinking about? The skulls also came to the gate. They guessed that some guys had reached the second level. They might be waiting for them in an ambush. You have to be very careful. Thanks to someone, the thug will be able to have even more fun during the hunt. He was ready to express his gratitude. He was ready to get even with Chong and make him pay for humiliating him. They went inside to the second level. After that, the gate was closed and a terrible red eye opened. Before entering the second level, they expected to be attacked immediately, but they were wrong. Chong believed that they were just hiding out of fear. He looked ahead, and arrows flew from there. They started fighting them off. Inexplicable glass containers with blood began to break. The arrows were still flying. Chong didn't know if it was blood or regular paint. It was a flask for collecting liquid. They didn't understand anything because it was such a good chance to attack them. But the smell was unreal, disgusting from this liquid. Sweating, Kim appeared and apologized for the arrows because he thinks this kind of smell suits them. They asked him to stop and not think that he would be safe here after betraying them. As he expected, this guy thinks he's on the same side as the Hun. He replied that he didn't understand what it was about. He knew that they planned to kill Hun and his team after that. He didn't expect them to follow them all this way. But he believed that now was not the time for these unnecessary conversations. They saw something on the horizon. It was a gigantic monster. They couldn't even see him completely because he was so big. His eyes were burning with fire. They exchanged glances with each other. They stood still for a few more minutes. Then they exchanged glances with another guy. During this time, the monster ate one of them. They did not understand what he did. Kim Jin said that the liquid he poured on them belonged to a goblin and it was also the favorite snack of the lizard. Therefore, he decided to pour this mixture on them so that they would become a wonderful dish for the lizard. They promised to kill him for such actions. One of the warriors jumped on him. Chong couldn't believe that Makamoto was leaving them. A battle began between them. He said he would scratch his eyes out alive. But Kim Jin didn't care about dogs like him. He looked down and I saw the master's sword in his hands. He thought he was a normal guy when he ran here. 
It seems that he is an apprentice of a master swordsman, but it was unclear how he found out about it. And where were the Hun boys? Because Kim Jin wasn't the main problem. They could clear this dungeon without a problem, even if they were alone. Chong asked to help him instead of just standing still. It will be very bad if Hun shows up now with his guys, and at this point all their forces will be scattered all over the second level area. The lizard rose to its feet. Their swords met. They were focused. Kim believed that their master had lost his grip. It was hard to believe that someone like him would become his apprentice. The boy was satisfied that he was subject to his provocations, but he was really experienced. It would be difficult to defeat him with only a sword. But Kim was smiling. Their fight continued. They carried out attacks in turn, but dodged them just as well. Makamoto was giving all his strength to this battle. Kim let out blood from his mouth. She got into the enemy's eyes. After that, he lost his balance. In his opinion, he had no right to spit blood at him. This blood was poisoned, so his stamina would decrease over time. If he uses poison, a very long fight puts him at a disadvantage. He decided not to waste time and kill him now. Matsumoto raised his sword up. Kim had one second to think. Perhaps it was a skill that was only available to those chosen by the halo. His sword was on fire, and he started attacking Kim. The boy did not understand how he should behave during this attack. He simply disappeared from the battlefield. The poisoning began to show on Makamoto's body. He wanted to regain his strength. But Kim turned out to be alive and attacked him from behind. He didn't understand how he managed to dodge the Blade of Destruction. He weakened very much. His face was covered in blood. He could not normally hit the enemy with his weapon. As a child, he was happy that he had achieved the ability of the Blade of Destruction. But he could only use it once. He was good at repeating after him. But it was still too heavy for him to use it in a real battle. His arm was arm was in terrible condition after he used the Blade of Destruction just once. This strike has a powerful force. He should refrain from using this strike against someone who knows his weak points. Because otherwise, everything can end badly for him. He will meet a monster that will remain alive even after this blow. And will be killed by this monster. Today was the day when he met such a monster. Chong saw him die. But the lizard did not give him the opportunity to help his friend. He fell to the ground and he continued to lie down from hopelessness. They all boasted that they were apprentices of a swordsman, but they all turned out to be weak. Hun never showed up with his guys. Now he won't win for anything. He wanted to make up with Kim and said they didn't need to fight at all. He begged for a truce and offered to conquer the dungeons together because otherwise he was sure that they would be destroyed by monsters. But he doesn't need to worry about that anymore. If Kim kills them, it will be much easier for him to clear the dungeon. Makamoto had no idea what he was talking about. A skeleton hand appeared on the ground. Then there were a lot of them. In addition, he could not trust the person who tried to kill him a few minutes ago. He had in reserve not only the skill of blood poisoning. A lizard monster was also chasing him behind, who was ready to eat him. He hit the boy then raised on the ground, spilled blood, and swung his clawed paw to strike. Matsumoto hoped only for a miracle. Chong survived and chopped off his paw. He started screaming that he has been asking for help for an eternity, and now he is begging for mercy. A lizard surrounded him, and she began to choke. Hold in your strong arms. She looked into his eyes, he told her to put her stupid head away because he was about to suffocate from her stench. The lizard began to squeeze him further. If he wants to get out of here alive, he has only one option left. He himself definitely won't be able to handle it. Therefore, he can only run away, hide until the other guys conquer this dungeon. And he decided to deal with the rest later. Now the most important thing was to survive because he could not die so easily. He started running, 
but something seemed to pass by him. The skeleton soldier attacked the lizard. He didn't think that a skeleton could move like that. His movements were similar to those of a high-level player. In addition, he was not alone, but there were as many as five of them. If Kim was that strong, then he could easily destroy the Hun team. This explains why they have not appeared until now. How they killed the Skull Guild in the dungeon. Now he understands. He just needs to get out of here and tell how everything really happened. But the lizard saw that he wanted to run away and ran after him. The skeletons continued to attack the lizard. There was nothing she could do about it. As a result, she fell to the ground. Makamoto saw that they had defeated the lizard and they will not let him escape. The lizard looked at him. She was not dead and she turned her attention to the boy again. He didn't understand why she was always after him. It was as if the skeletons were invisible. Now that he is distracting the warrior lizard on himself, it was much easier for Kim. He probably does not fully understand the situation that has developed now, because of the time when people could only rely on their level and items. While clearing a dungeon, the girl did not understand why she should put it on her body. The man himself did not know the details, but he heard that the lizard's eyesight is not very good. So when you put something on yourself, it can help camouflage. Kim Jin was right. But that was not the point. I wonder how well these guys are doing now. The lizard continued to catch up with the boy, but he couldn't run away from her all the time. It seems that the lizard only hunts players. He believed that he should not suffer alone. Kim must also run away with him. He saw Makamoto running towards him, but a skeleton stood in his way. He did not allow to reach the boy, but he did not understand how the skeleton dared to block his way and jumped over it with ease. But there were more skeletons. He accepted the fight with another. He needed to defeat the skeletons to get to Kim Jin. His eyes were bloodshot, and as a result, he was caught. But one of the skeletons did not allow him to get to Kim. The guy was sitting on the ground. The lizard ran to him again. And finally, she caught him. Kim watched all this. She injured his leg. And at that moment, the lizard continued its attack. But the skeletons began to finish her off. Now he could escape because they had killed her. Kim thanked him for keeping the lizard away from him all this time. But this concert had to end. Makamoto asked what he needed from him and asked him to help him get out of the dungeon. It is better for another guy to deal with his request for salvation. He came back, and again he saw a lizard in front of him. He was very interested in why he was chasing only him. His eyes work as heat sensors. It is clear that he has no interest in cold skeletons. He lay frightened on the ground, and the lizard pounced on him. In the news, they started writing that the boss of the dungeon is a tailed lizard. The Phoenix Guild refuses to enter the dungeons. Park Van was watching the news with the secretary. It was hard to believe this, at a time when they were planning to conquer the 6th level dungeon. One could not even imagine worse. As she had expected, public opinion about Felix's guild was terrible. But the president believed that if he listened to the weaklings, he would only waste time. Now they should concentrate only on the level 6 dungeon. The Messiah Guild has agreed to open the entrance to the dungeon. If this is a high priority issue, then they have plenty of time to conquer the dungeon. Society has found a new idol. Although the Messiah Guild delayed its entrance, it is obvious that it is not just called the Snake of Death. France, America, Japan. It's been two years since it first appeared in their countries, but they still don't know much about this monster. Another player hasn't returned from hunting this monster. There's no point in even discussing it when it comes to this monster. It is even hard to imagine that such a dangerous monster appeared in the country. There is no information about him. People accepted the guild's decision without question. But did they really announce it without ulterior motives? He looked at the tablet and couldn't believe it. It was necessary to see it with one's own eyes. 
I wonder what will happen if all the guilds postpone the entrance to the dungeon. Then only the fearless will gather together. Although it may still be very difficult to clear the dungeon. And over time, the authorities will want to get rid of this dungeon. Other countries will also open dungeons. It's true. The dungeon will be conquered on a much larger scale. But what will happen if someone appears at this time who can defeat this lizard? They will become quite popular. Then the Messiah Guild purposefully tries to get more time. He's not sure, but if you think about their abilities, there must be a reason why they are in no hurry to enter the dungeon. The longer they delay, given the growing fear, the more items will be in the dungeon. When they defeat the lizard, they will be able to gain both wealth and fame. Meanwhile, the skeletons finished off the lizard and increased their level. Everything ended much faster than he expected, because skeletons do not have body temperature. If he contacted guys who have connections with the Messiah Guild, it will be difficult for him to move calmly. The skeletons completely killed the lizard. As a reward, he received a sword made from the shell of an armored turtle. A weapon used by a master swordsman. Not the worst option. He gave it to the skeleton and told him to use it now. The skeleton saw his reflection in him. He approached Makutoto and said they needed to talk. The dungeon was cleared. The guard congratulated Kim, but he said that everyone was killed except him. The man asked for details so that he could write an extensive report and provide it to his guild. The boy said that he could write simply that the lizard was much stronger than they expected. The guy was on the phone and said he had done his job. Everything was exactly as Park Van said. One of the boys who wanted to kill him possessed a sword of a unique rank, which had previously belonged to a master swordsman. As it was known, the master was an important member of the Messiah Guild, and also the head of the Yamato faction. He is sure that this faction is the main branch of the Skull Guild. The boy thought about it. He also said that he couldn't see anything, but he could find more information if he looked into it better, and he would contact them later. The guy turned off the light, but his TV looked like it had an eavesdropping sensor. He went out into the yard, but Kim knew about it. They gave the bug to their fighter. They decided to take such measures because he had to interact with the person being monitored, and he placed it behind the TV and warned Makamoto about it. Kim wanted the Skull Scum to fall into his trap. Now he was wondering how the Skull Guild would deal with Park Van. He put his hands in his pockets, and Park Van called him. He said that he heard about what happened, that they killed everyone except him. This time, luck was on his side, and the president asked if he had anything special. He said that he couldn't notice anything because he was focused on survival. But he now knows where the head of the Skull Guild is. He invited the boy to his home so that he could tell him all the details. He got into the car and started it. 19 Elson Station Storage Box Si Chang was a reasonably cautious broker. I wonder if he knows that he is also his target. He looked inside and hoped that the list would not disappoint him. The guy got back in the car. It was no wonder the Messiah Guild saw him as a problem. Its content and quality were excellent. Remembering the dungeon he conquered when he was a Messiah warrior. Now he finally understands where they were taken from. Si Chang became a target for a reason. The guy saw something. Some unusual dungeon. There wasn't much information about the lizard egg. Even he couldn't find the source or the variants. It was interesting what kind of eggs were inside. He can only find out directly. Only Si Chang possesses this knowledge. It was a hint to get closer to the truth. He was supposed to be the one to clean this dungeon. He turned to Si Chang over the walkie-talkie. He asked if anyone could hear him. Finally, it was time for their first deal. Meanwhile, in the park van office, he couldn't believe that the Hun group fought with the Skull group and all died in this battle. One of them was much stronger than the other Skull guilds. Judging by their sword skills and ammunition, they are definitely related to Japan. Some factions have quite a large influence in Japan as well. 
As soon as the dungeon is cleared, he will need to deal with this problem. Park Van challenges a level 6 dungeon. Since he was the only one to come out of the dungeon, in which all the members of the Skull Guild were destroyed twice in a row, they will start following him. You need to refrain from impulsive actions until he clears the dungeon and returns. The secretary said that his money was transferred to his account. This was his compensation. The president said he would contact him after clearing the dungeon. The guy went out into the yard. I wonder when he will return from the dungeon. Now that these bastards know that Park Ban is backing him behind their backs, they're more likely to focus on him. He looked forward to Park Van's reaction after they met next time. He's done with all his urgent matters. Now he needs to go against Park Van's warnings and start acting on his own. Blue Wagon. The secretary reported that all preparations were completed, but she does not know if Kim will accept this situation. He asked her not to worry about this. If there is a problem, he will talk to him. Kim was approaching this blue wagon. He overheard the conversation between the secretary and Lee Chin. He asked not to be called Mr. when they were not in the dungeon. He repeated many times that he does not like it when she calls him that. Anyone who hears it may think that he is a woman. Lee Chin of the Phoenix Guild. Is this really the guy? He went inside. The secretary said that the experimenter would accompany him because he did not choose a dungeon that would match his level. If he agreed, he had to sign the relevant documents. He could also ask questions that interested him. He was an immortal player. When he was a seeker in the Messiah Guild, he was able to escape twice, but he wouldn't get a third chance like that. It was interesting that he was related to Sishan. The boy heard for the first time that he needed an experimenter. In any case, they said that he should enter the gate with this person. He should have heard what he said to the secretary. The guy apologized and said that he forgot that he likes to be called Mr.